Hello. Hi, is this Bell? Yes, this is. Hi, this is Harrison. Hi, Harrison. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm sorry I'm a little late there. It's okay. So, uh, what can I do for you? What can we do here? So, I just wanted to set up an interview to talk about uh, Death House and a little bit about talk about, a little bit about uh, your directing of the film. Sure, sure. Absolutely. What questions you got for me? That won't be okay, a problem. So, I have about 14 questions, and I might just add, jump in and add other ones as well along the way. That that would be fine. Alrighty. Uh, so tell me about Death House. Uh, what is the film about? Uh, well, I mean, it's um, basically if if you've seen the the profile and everything online, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's like the Area Fifty One of prisons, and we have the largest collection of horror names that are stuck inside this prison, basically. Yeah. And uh, two federal agents end up going through it and the system breaks down is really what happens similar to like Jurassic Park mm -hmm. and they have to fight their way out of the complex. But that, that was really exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the film. Um, why a, a, a prison story like um, where the whole, all the horror starts in a prison? Well, I mean, Gunnar Hansen's original script had it that it took place in an asylum mm -hmm. and we've seen a lot of that before. So what we wanted to do this time around was just basically, um, you know, I wanted to change something up. So I worked that out with Gunner, and uh, it all went really well, and we ended up with the, the prison story. Awesome. Uh, what was it like working alongside a, a man who was so much more than just Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, it was a real honor, and, and he was a gentleman, and he was such a nice man. And uh, he had been trying to get Death House off the ground for years, and I was glad to be able to be a part of it to help him to, to get it going. He was uh, a big, gentle giant is really what he was. What was your favorite uh, moment working with him? Uh, well, meeting him, I think, would be my favorite moment, <laughs> and um, socializing with him. I mean, I got to meet with him several times face-to-face, -face, and then, of course, talked quite a bit on the phone. And I think just the honor of uh, being able to pick up the phone with him and exchange ideas back and forth. And I was really, really, uh, I felt very privileged. I mean, I grew up, you know, watching his films. And, of course, Texas Chainsaw is a classic. So, for me, it was um, it was just a real honor. Would you consider Texas Chainsaw being one of your favorite horror films? No, no. My, my favorite horror movie, hang on one second, please. Okay. Um, my, my favorite horror movie... It's my favorite movie of all time is the original Jaws, um, but um, I'm gonna say the horror movie that actually has scared me the most is Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1978. Huh. Uh, that one has really bothered me because I think that's exactly what's happening now. I think the movie actually called it out pretty well with what's going on. Wow, awesome! Uh, what's your favorite Jaws movie? My favorite Jaws movie? Yeah. Oh, the original. The yeah, first the, the one. first one. Okay. Yeah. That was a good one too. Uh, what inspired you to direct this film as writing as well as writing it with Gunnar Hansen? Well, it was it was brought to me by um, two producers, Rick Finkelstein and Stephen Chase of Entertainment Factory, and they asked me to come on board um, and introduce me to Gunnar. So mm -hmm. it, it wasn't really my. I, I guess it was my choice. Um, but at the same time, the project was brought to me. So, and I was grateful uh, just to be given that project. So, um, I, I think that that's really the way that it happened. I mean, I didn't go out and, and find Gunner. I, I didn't do anything like that. The project was brought to me. As a matter of fact, the evening of a, a screening for my movie, Zombie Killers, uh, out in Los Angeles. So, I met Rick and Steve there, and they were the greatest guys, the nicest guys. And um, Rick is just a top-line producer along with Steve, and I, I love working with them as well because, you know, Rick promised Gunner, I'm going to get this done, and, and he did it. And Gunner, even as he was dying, said it was his, his final wish to get this movie made, and, and Rick did it. Wow. Uh, what was your uh, reaction that you would be working with Gunner? Well, I mean, I was, I was absolutely thrilled. I mean, he's a legend. Um, He's fantastic, and, and so most of all, it was, it, like I said, it was a privilege just to work with him in that capacity of being simply asked.
I guess, is, is even better. I mean, it's not often you, you get asked to work alongside somebody that's, that's just so prolific in such an industry and in, in the art field. So um, that, that was just the best part, I think. All right. Uh, what should uh, horror fans uh, expect to see from Death House? Well, expect to have a lot of fun with it. Um, it's serious horror. We have some great practical effects. Uh, CGI is used only to clean things up. So the blood is, you know, all real blood we used on the set. I think we used over 50 gallons of blood in, in the making of the film. I know that's not a record. I think Piranha 3D holds the record for that, for most blood used on a set. Um, however, expect a, a great array of, of all your favorite stars, basically. And there will be more even in the sequel. Some of the stars we couldn't get because of scheduling, like Bruce Campbell or Robert Englund. But th that's okay. They said, you know, hit us up on, on the next one, and they were very nice people about it. And uh, just you can't help with scheduling. I mean, the project had been around so long, they had to move on to other things. So um, once we got it going, it didn't mean that everybody's schedule would be clear. So we uh, expect, like I said, I've described it as expect a, a roller coaster ride through the fun house is really what it will be like to watch it. It has a very strong 80s vibe to it. And, um, you know, it's a small independent film and, uh, we're, we're excited about it. I think we made a really good film and we really did right by the people who, um, are a part of this film as well too. And we did right by Gunner. All right. And you mentioned, uh, chances for a sequel, um, early on. There, yes. Else? Yeah. We're looking at five sequels. That's correct. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yep. where they have most of the cast members that are going to be in the, the first one? Uh, well, I, I really, I don't want to give away too many surprises. Let's just say there there are some people who will be showing up in the second one that were in the first one, and there are some who didn't quite make it. Okay. And uh, when, when would the next one be released? Uh, that'll depend on distribution and when we go into production, so I really can't, you know, give a, I can't give a time schedule on that. Okay. And um, I saw online that the film's going to have references to other horror movies as well, like a, a mashup. Well, when you say a mashup, you got to be careful of that. Um, it will have, you know, references to other horror films, yes. It is not a mashup in the way of, like, you know, uh, Kane Hodder does not play Jason. And, you know, uh, Tony Todd does not play Candyman. So it's not a mashup that way. It's not like a Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein kind of movie. Okay. And what is it like working with a bunch of horror actors like Bill Mosley, Kane Hodder, and Sid Haig? They're the nicest people. They really are. They're some of the nicest people I think I've ever worked with and very professional and take their craft seriously. And they were an absolute pleasure. They, they, everyone, it was one of the nicest times I ever had on a movie set. And what was it like to direct the known icons in the film, knowing their staple roles and needing them to be something else? Um, I, I think it was easy because they were so easy. They were, they were just, again, such nice people that it wasn't really hard. They, they didn't walk on set like acting. They were, they were a big deal. They, they were all there to make a movie, and most of all, they were there to do it for Gunner. And uh, what was the uh, catalyst in your commitment to make this film? Uh, the catalyst? Well, I mean, being presented with the project, first of all. And then I think, you know, as I hate to say it, but, you know, when, when Gunner died and it was his dying wish, I think that was the real catalyst. We all felt like, well, now we really got to get this done. I mean, you know, and Rick had promised to get it done and, uh, I think that was important. Okay. And the film will be dedicated to Gunner, like when, in the credits or something? That's correct. It will be, yep. Alrighty. And would you consider horror being your favorite genre in film? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I enjoy it very much. Is it my favorite? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I love a good comedy, so um, and I love a great drama. So I think, you know, the real love is for film. Uh, but I, I do, I've grown up with horror. I think it was probably the first real genre I was introduced to. So um, I, I would say I have some preferences for it, sure. Okay. Uh, what was the first horror movie that you saw? 
uh, first real horror film. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember, but I, I'm sure it was one of the, the black and white classics like uh, Frankenstein or The Wolfman. Yeah. I used to watch a lot of that. I mean, you're too young to know, but back in the day, on you know, we had three channels, and uh, you know, on Saturday afternoons they played things like Creature Feature, and you watched, you know, they played all the old black and white films, including the the fifties Alien movies and Big Bug movies. So it could have been any one of them. So I really don't know, but uh, it was. I'm sure it was one of the old classic black and whites. Yeah, the only classic one I saw was the 1920s uh, Frankenstein movie, and I cons- I consider that being yeah, one of the yeah. oldest. I've seen. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, is there a horror film that you would like to reboot? Uh, that that would depend. I mean, I, I, I online I carry a very strong presence about making original stuff. If mm-hmm. if there is a reboot or a remake, it would be fine. If I guess if it called for it, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I. The answer right now, I'm going to say, Bell, is no. Uh, unless, you know, I, I consider a reboot or a remake okay if, you know, the, the original budget wasn't good enough or they, there were things that they were limited that they just couldn't achieve, maybe. But, you know, like, for example, Jaws needs no remake. It needs no reboot. That That isn't needed at all. It right. was made with, with absolute artistic integrity and, and talent and, and a proper budget. It we don't need a CGI shark and a reboot and, you know, some type of backstory of why the shark is coming to Amity. We, we don't need all of that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I there are some films, I, I guess, out there that, you know, you could throw some money at to redo. Mm-hmm. I thought that the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers 1978 was a damn fine reboot or a remake of, of the original 1950 classic, 1950s classic. Mm-hmm. So um, it depends. You know, it's it's all about really what it comes down to for art. If you're just going to remake it to make a buck, uh, chances are it'll probably stink. Alrighty. And I have one more question uh, today. Um, why do uh, horror movies sure. matter? Uh, what is it about their films that affect, attracts so many fans? I think uh, the, the simple thing is is we like to be scared as as a as an animal, we, we enjoy the rush that we get. Why do people ride roller coasters? I mean, it's certainly not because it's a comfortable ride. Um, we go on them because they jolt us, they scare us, and they, they give us the ability to be frightened in the confine of safety. And I think uh, that's what horror does for us. I, I think we can safely sit in our living rooms and watch some people have a really awful time at things and go, thank God I'm not them. And uh, I think that's it's kind of almost voyeuristic where – we're able to watch somebody else's misery from a very, very safe distance and through the wall of fiction. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Yeah, you are welcome. It was a real pleasure, and I hope I gave you some good information, and I really appreciate your interest in the film. Of course. Anytime. I'm looking forward to seeing the film. Yeah, I hope you'll like it. I hope so, too. <laughs> but I think you will, and I'm, I'm sure you saw the yeah, I'm sure you saw the trailer. Yep, I saw it three times already. <laughs> all right, good. All right. Well, keep spreading the word, and most of all, thank you for your interest in the film, and, uh, you know, reach out anytime on Twitter or whatever, and, and we'll be happy to, to get you some information once we get more in, but the film is in post-production right now, okay. and once it's finished, we'll be sending out alerts on that. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you very much, and I'm sorry again for being about five minutes late. It's okay. All right. All righty. You take care and have a good evening. Bye-bye. All right, bye.